Breaking isolation and finding common goals. That's how we move forward together. And around here, we're doing just that. One episode at a time. Peace. Yeah. Did you catch the Colorado Classic 2021 live? How about seeing it in code? Follow the hashtag on your favorite social platform to catch the rest of the story behind the people and the things they do. It's a hell of a thing. Hey, if you were a sponsor of the Colorado Classic, uh, watch for your logo and stick around to the end to see how you can get one more boost out of your logo placement. Thanks for your support. We're just trying to give back. Okay, you see, Tom's kind of come out with his final pairing up heat here. And I went with the last end of this sequence because it's super easy to kind of fall in love with the process and watching the shoe be built. But right now is when this class is won or lost. Did you build those shoes? fast enough and nice enough to be able to do this level of finish work and this level of pairing up. Watch this process. It's fascinating how much time they have to get these shoes paired up. And you watch they both, they check their nails over and over and over and over again to make sure they're dropped. A nail check nails for each other. I think this is Rory's last pairing up too. Look at the detail on these suckers. This is a hammer finish shoe. Look here, check it out. So it's expect to go right on top of each other. You can probably see daylight through every nail hole, guaranteed. Almost perfect mirror image. Looks like one source was maybe racked off just a hammer blower too. There he goes, checking the nail holes again. I'm kind of telling myself, Jason, hurry up and get in the spot. Settle down. There they go, pairing them up. Look at them. And then just right on top of each other. And there it is. A wide toe bump and then a narrow toe bump. You know what I mean? Just to build section. Yeah, but that's too much when you can draw it all out. When you draw it out, you get, get thickness. When you get thickness, you can do more ironing. When you do more ironing, you get more lines. Yeah. So. It's when you can't hit something that sucks. <laughs> Seriously. And I was getting to the point where I was getting too big, so I couldn't hit it anymore. So. How much did you cut? Too much. <laughs> I would have cut. If I do it again right now, I'd probably cut. I'd probably cut a and quarter, eleven and a half, somewhere in there. So a quarter, half inch, eleven. You know, just build a section just a little bit different. So if you were making a run at it to win it, that's the kind of shit you would practice. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your dad like, I would have, during, if that was a practice go, I would have took that shoe, started time over again from where I knew my trim stopped, okay. build a new shoe. I wasn't happy with that one, cut time, chuck it, start over again. Yeah. And so I built the shoe that I want for that foot and that size, that section, everything. Now that's something you keep tracking in a book, or do you just remember that? You got it all up there. Just head. I'm way not smart enough for that. Just head. That's the only thing I can remember. So like, as you do more contests and you build more shoes, you get more of a arsenal of measurements, more of an arsenal of things you can do. I've built fishtails before. This is just a variation of fishtail. I already knew how to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same thing like, like you guys are working on plain stamps and shoe modifications. So when those shoe modifications come on, handmade in the future you already have that stuff to fall back on you know what i mean so now you're just dealing with raw material to do it with well, shoes that i haven't really built maybe that much of but like for the most part like i've gotten a lot of shoes already built and i've put a lot of them on feet you know what i mean like put euro bars on feet i've put roadsters on feet i've put two and fluttered on feet z bars on feet fishtails on feet patent bars on you know what i mean like the longer you shoe the more you can get there that's the experience so. do you make your shoes for everyday work fuck no fuck no i want to go make money yeah like i put oh, handmaids oh. on yeah i put one i put handmaids on but i don't do all of them and they're at home probably you know? yeah most of them are at home i don't build them at the horse unless it's like a very specific case right or i want to do something that i don't have the ability to build in a kick i have on my truck you know what i mean yeah so. but you don't build inventory like a lot of, you do build a lot of inventory for this. I built, like, all my, so I built, I, I believe in three shoes. Plain stamps, three quarter fullered, and rim shoes. Mm -hmm. Three quarter fullered, I use Zeros. Mm -hmm. Rim shoes, I use con uh, concave, that I spin myself. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't want to spend that much money on hand, like, Billy Crothers Handmaids and all the other concave shoes. Yeah. And it's really good practice. I've learned the most turning concave than I have out of any other shoe in my opinion. Because you can build them fast, it doesn't fatigue you, and you get to see instant results. You know what I mean? So if you take three heats and build a shoe, and then you put it on a foot, and it tells you all the feedback, it's way better than taking seven heats to build a shoe, putting it on a foot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, can, you can do more of it. It's more efficient. You can make faster, quicker adjustments to learn from. And then so as you build that up, then you can go to the more longer heated shoes. And, you know, shit like that. That's what I mean. That's why I said I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just what I've done, and it's helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I did the year of 3H1, mm -hmm. and that, that changed it's massive. my practice. It's massive. Like, how to chase out. Like. Mm -hmm. I feel like you need to go through like the concave swing, learn a uh, body position, tongue position, hammer angles, how to manipulate sections that's very finessey, and then go 3H3 quarter. You know, three quarter folder and do all that kind of stuff, and then jump to three eighths by one. Start running sections, understand sections, because uh -huh. it's just compounding on each one of those. Yeah. You know, what I mean? like if you, if a person did a year of making concave on feet, a year of putting three quarter fuller on feet from three eighths by three quarter for the most part, and then jump for only three eighths by one. Yeah. By the fourth year, that person would be savage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like no matter what came their way, they'd be like, ah. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't get into concave because I don't have any real call for it. So I didn't get into concave until I started competing. Sure. And then that got me into tool, like that because, low reach to yeah. fuller, not fun. Yeah. You that's know. that's like a massive mind fuck. Like if, and, and, so, and then on top of it, so the guys that are legends like Gary Darlow about putting tool and fuller on feet. It's because they put a pile of it on. So it's the same thing. If you went from three eighths by one for a year and then only did two and four for a year, it would just step up. Yeah. Fast, efficient, complicated shoes. Because you learn a ton from that two and four just building a section, right? Learn like, like. And then you learn a ton more when you start applying it to an actual foot. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Because that changes your trim. Mm hmm. So somebody left that at my shop. So, Mr. Bobblehead wants to know, how many times do you see each logo? Count them up, put it in the comments.
Hey, check it up. These are all those cool people that make the Colorado Classic family. Not only family, but a big family reunion from all the people from across the country that show up at this great contest. It wouldn't be possible without the people or the sponsors. So if you see somebody you recognize, tag them, hit share, send them a clip. If you see a sponsor that you're down with, hashtag them. Connect their social media together and help them tell their story and keep us rolling. Peace. I got shit to do. So the Dodge Stone Memorial is one that's near and dear to my heart, and uh, we'll get into that later. But the thing is, I'm glad I was here for this next part, and I just had to leave it in. So stick around to learn a little bit more about the backstory on the RMFA. Peace. Thanks for watching. Hit share, hit like, comment, do whatever you do. I just hope you enjoyed the video. Tribute to God. Um, we're going to walk out stuff in here for the bank. So, just thought it was appropriate um, to do that this year. A lot of young young guys in here that probably have no idea who Dodge Stone was, but he passed away in uh, like 2012, I guess. And like the late 80s and 90s, if you had a nice jumper in Colorado, he was probably shooing it. Like, he was the man. Um, he was just extremely talented, way ahead of his time, um, was doing things with horses' feet that now is like commonplace and back then was like revolutionary, you know, he was just kind of a, kind of blazed the path for a lot of people. And when you talk to a lot of the older guys, guys in their 50s and 60s, like they look up to him like he was like a cornerstone of their, of their failure career, you know, he just gave back to the industry a hundredfold, you know. Um, but one of the biggest things that he was always so good at, and the reason why I sponsor the, this class in memory of him is because he was all about teamwork. Like, he felt like we were always better and stronger to shoe horses as a team and to come together and, and work together as farriers instead of being lone rangers and doing your own thing. And he was never one to ever say anything negative about another horseshoe. Like, no matter what, he, he always said, the greatest way to show insecurity was to speak ill will of another horseshoe. Like, you would never do that, you know? And there were countless occasions where I would be with him and <clears throat> we'd go into a barn and, you know, he got called in on a, on a tough case that somebody else had been working on and he always wanted that horseshoe to be there and he always come beside him and he would say, look, man, I don't know what, if I'm good, what I'm going to try to do is going to be anything better than what you tried to do. But, you know, if, if it looked like that guy was trying that he was all about coming beside him and, and bringing them along. And he wasn't there to take their work. He was there to just try to help them in any way that he could, you know? And, and I think with the amount of talent that's in this room, whether you're in division one or the open, you're going to have opportunity in your life to be, to be in those shoes where you get called in on a special case or a problem horse. Right. And, and be that guy, you know, don't, don't talk bad about the other horse. Sure. Just come beside him and say, man, I don't know if what I'm going to do is going to work or not, but let's try it. You know, and instead of being the opposite of that and, and running his name in the mud and, and uh, you know, taking his business or whatever, you don't have to do that. You guys are all going to have thriving businesses because you're right here today and you're, you're devoted to your trade and so your business is going to thrive. You're going to succeed. So, so that's kind of my deal about Dodd. He was, he was a lot of fun. Uh, he had Parkinson's disease at the end. I was fortunate enough, I moved to Colorado in 2004 and I met him at, at Cliff Carroll's Supply House, you know, and I didn't know a single person that owned a horse at the time and wanted to keep shoeing horses. So, so I was there and he said, well, what do you got going tomorrow? So I jumped in the truck with him, you know, and spent the next three years with him. And the last, the last year, his Parkinson's was so bad that he was in a wheelchair. And so I would go three days a week, I'd go to the assisted living, I'd pick him up and put the wheelchair in the back of the truck and we'd go shoe horses. And his clients had so much trust in him that he was still shoeing some really top horses in the area and couldn't, couldn't even hardly stand up. So it was a huge, huge opportunity for me because 
because I had to be his hands, you know, he would tell me exactly what to do and yell at me when it was wrong, you know? And so it was, I mean, it was set me on a path that, that I'm super blessed to be on. Um, but, but that was the kind of trust that he had from his customers that, that even though he wasn't the one doing the work, they still trusted him to shoot the horses. And at his funeral, there were, there were over a hundred horseshoers there from all over the United States. And it was, it was pretty cool. And every one of them came just out of respect for him, you know? So, so we did this buckle. Uh, it's a big deal to me. I, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's just kind of a sign that, you know, we can, we can be that, you know, we can, he's all, he was always about the horse. I mean, it was always about, you know, what's, what's in the best interest of the horse and, and his horses did really well because of that. So with all that said, um, I'm proud to present these two buckles to the draft class winners, uh, Mr. Tom Peterson, Mr. Rory Bauer. Tags and say thank you in the comments. Right. The sponsors are the ones paying the bills and they're all over the footage. So we're yeah, doing a sound awesome. check right now. Okay. So <clears throat> all we're doing right now is that bit of the video where you kind of got to conspire a little bit and get on the same wavelength, you know? Who wants, do you have another one of these? I'm gonna owe you what this is this deal with that. You liked it? I did. Okay. Yeah, I got lots of them. Yeah. And now, so what are if these? You need that one's called Zip Fizz, but Zip Fizz? And what is it? They're like, just electrolytes and vitamins and minerals. And they don't so give you the scours? Um, I think if you drink a whole bunch of them, but I haven't gotten the the screaming shits. It's just like it's been nice for me because yeah. I I uh, am kind of regular. Taking them a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, that um, gets to be kind of an important thing. Oh god! <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, shoeing horses with a unpredictable tummy is uh, its own set of challenges. I think. Cattle shoots and paint cans. <laughs> right. No <laughs> shit, man. You need no, more water. Yeah. You can use some out of the cooler, or I can get another bottle. I got. It. <laughs> I gotta get me a good. I like that jug. That's a that's a pretty I've got, fuser I've got friendly one jug. One of these and then a half gallon one. Yeah. Caleb stole my half gallon one. It's filtered water. It's just not real cold. I don't really like water to be real cold. I, don't I want it to cool me off, but not. Yeah. When it's <laughs> super like cold, it's hard. my gizzard. Yeah. <laughs> COVID. Look at there. And then you have this I handy got it little. Again. You have this handy little reusable container when we're finished. For matches or toothpicks yes, or, yes. or bobby pins or some marijuana. <laughs> oh, who could be? Who could uh. be? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea, Nikki, is to make this part of the video kind of for the Patreons only. Right? And so then, like, we can kind of be... I'm not showing anyone my boobs, Jason. 
<laughs> well, I <laughs> mean, though they God pay. dang it, you know, Nikki. Sorry. Fan service. <laughs> fan service. They'd have, you'd have to point the camera further down. Like, yeah, wait, but you're wait. supposed to bring the MILF value to the show. Oh, I mean, yeah. come on. Well, I got the old lady part down. Well, I mean, you know. You know. The, the mom. Yeah. Yeah, and I've already got you singing You Can Eat Crackers in My Bed Anytime <laughs> on camera. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's going to get inserted. So that's going to be an intro somewhere oh. along the way. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy yeah. white legs. They, they're too scary. I know. I mean, who could bear to hang out with a dude in I mean, shorty shorts and painted fingernails? I mean, you got to be really, really comfortable with yourself. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> saying? Apparently, I'm a hippie. But oh yeah. I don't know how come. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit uncomfortable. Yeah. You're yeah. good. At that. Shorty shorts. Just yeah. You quit wagging your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was gonna be genius. <laughs> how many times? How many times you got an apprentice sitting in the back seat, rear view mirrors right there, yeah. and they're like sitting all manspreaded, right? And they're shorty shorts because that's what they're out and about on, right? And like, what do you do about that? Besides, like, or you look back and go, whoa, there it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> did I ever tell you about Nearly Naked Girl? Nearly Naked Girl? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Nearly Naked Girl. That's fun. Yeah. Because <laughs> that could be anybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's just this little gal at a barn, one of the guys that I go help. And last summer I was in there, you know, just working away. Shorts not too far off. Yeah, yeah. Those, you know, yeah, with those yeah. little workout shorts and just a little sports bra. And, you know, I'm busy on the foot and I look up and there's all the kibbles and bits. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Poor little gal. Like, she's just as sweet as she can be, but oh my, I did not prepare myself for that day. Yeah. But apparently yeah. that barn is a favorite of some of the other younger male helpers. And I'm oh. like, no, we don't. Oh, really you think. Are. You think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you think so. But, well, and I've got no problem with that in and of itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you want to go around with your kibbles and bits hanging out, they do you do you, boo. You know, like... <laughs> I just was a little bit, like... In, and I don't think anything was intentional except for the vantage point that I found myself at down yeah. underneath the horse. Yeah. And happened to glance up when somebody spoke. And... Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's startling. Hmm. Hmm. It's startling. I usually, you know, like, prepare myself. Yeah. But... Well, I mean, it's, so it's she is hard to as known a, a, very affectionately as nearly naked girl. It's hard to as a male farrier, right? Like, uh, and especially as a male farrier that likes to look over the fence from time to time. You know, like it is what it She's is. Nice and a lot of us are like that. You know, it's like, oh, shiny. Yeah. You know, and but you work against that kind of a thing, and then, but and then you know, nearly naked girl shows up and you can't like you don't know what to do with your oh, eyes dude. you yeah. know because it's like uh, uh well now you're obvious right right so then when you do make eye contact it's creepy already uh, yeah. because you're trying to just not like look and look inappropriately it, yeah everything's just uncomfortable and... yeah it makes it real hard for apprenticeships too yeah because like my wife is not about to let that be in the truck yeah, yeah. And and I don't blame her. Nobody blames her. That's just a matter of marriage protection, you know. That is I mean? absolutely. Like I've, I've talked to a number of people about. Like, yeah. Wearing things that are snug or high or just like being cognitive of all the. Because we get caught in compromising situations, you know. Yeah. And I don't think owners want to see cleavage any more than they want to see butt crack. I mean, there's a time and a place for cleavage. My wife's a bartender, and I happen to like the like that. I like that she bartends bar because she doesn't make up like that for me. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just like when you, I mean, you have to bend over, and if everything kind of dangles out, and you can see all the way to your belt buckle, that's probably not yeah. great. 
and I understand it's hard for some women to eat, right? Sure. Like given what we like, I've heard women have to wear like some women had to wear three bras. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, how horrible would that be? Like trying to breathe in a compromised position. I you think know. it's just um, that if that's you know what that's everybody can just kind of recognize that it's there and it's all right but it's not necessarily something you just want to invite everyone yeah. all the time yeah. and, and so now there's lots and lots of stories you know of crazy things yeah that i don't know I, I, i've always tried to think about like Example set for my kids, what I'd let my kids wear, like what I'd want my husband to see, like and and, and if I'd be comfortable with that, then I'm alright with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. One of these days in a different video we'll have to discuss like like dealing with traveling together. As oh, like yeah. male we're, and female we're good road at, We've got lots of experience. That way. Yeah, like, like talking I've been about all over that. the world and yeah. And well, and not just amongst ourselves, but with you know other people. Yeah. You know, traveling with yeah. other you know mixed company. Traveling with mixed company. Yeah. There's the episode right there. Yeah, I've, I've so done a lot of that. So between the two of us, when we're having some drive time, we're gonna have to film the next episode and call it traveling with mixed company <laughs> hey guys so what this is is one of the best parts about getting connected is the drive time right we get a lot of downtime to talk to each other and get to know each other a lot of camp time whether that camp time is around a bar stool or uh, around a fire or around a dinner time you know anytime you come together as a camp to break bread and drink and be merry is camp time. Our crew is the heart and soul of what we do. We travel great lengths and make whatever sacrifice to gain the experience, and all in the name of the horse. Crowdfunding is just my way of keeping it real. And our patrons are all in for the journey. The experience is the destination. Peace. This is the Road Terminal Center for World Domination. There's where I will entertain myself. There's where I think shit up. Alright, I'm going to try something out. Tell me if you like it. But right now he's chopping that heel in and that's kind of a weird backing in hammer blow that you just kind of got to be with somebody to teach. Now he's kind of getting the inertia bend in and defining his check down there real quick and lifting the section up. Pay attention to what the anvil's doing, not the hammer blow. So you see where he put his shoe right there on the horn and he made that wave at the horn and he just kind of keeps pushing it back. Now he's going to work up and clean up his line all the way to his check. Flat, well, it usually flattens. Now he's gonna go in here and hem it up. I feel like a racetrack announcer. Pretty heavy trim, hemming up there, lighten up. Well, that's probably the medial branch, no bigger than that caulking is on the end of it. There's no way to summarize what you've just seen and heard, save to say that, God willing, all these exceptional people will be going home one day. Let us hope that to assemble for such a purpose again. Good night. Details will be somewhere. You can buy a hashtag placement by sponsoring the series, or you can just become a patron. Either way, it's the same. Thanks for helping us share the knowledge. Thanks for helping us share the knowledge. Peace.